Fatal Data here with Recording Essentials, and today I'm going to show you how you can use the Isotope plugin Stutter Edit to add some really interesting textures to your bass sounds. So to start out, I'm going to get you to load this Logic template that I've created for you. And we're just going to go to the 25th bar here and loop out that for eight bars. So I'm just going to give you an idea of what this sounds like all together, and then we're going to go back and add a MIDI controlled Stutter Edit plugin on top of the bass track and play over it and kind of give you an idea of some of the presets that you can use and how Stutter Edit actually works so you can really manipulate your sounds out. So the first thing to do when loading Stutter Edit is you want to select whatever track you have that's going to be coming out of and that's going to act as the input file. Then we're going to go up to Track and we're going to go create New Software Instrument Track. Now by default it's going to load this classic electrical piano, but we're just going to reset that channel strip uh, because we want to start with a fresh blank slate. Next we're going to go to Instruments, go to the drop down menu, go to AU MIDI Controlled Effects, go to Isotope and select Stutter Edit. I'm just going to choose Mono for the purpose of this tutorial um, so it won't add unnecessary stereo effects, but normally a lot of the time when I'm going through it, I'm going to use the stereo because uh, it's going to add more texture into the sound, add some stereo field type effects and get things really nice. So the next thing you want to do is go to the top here, it's your stutter edit, and go sidechain. And we're going to set this to be whatever the input is that's coming off of whatever our input track going into this is going to be. So choose audio 9, which is going to be the bass. And the next important thing is we want to go back to the bass and turn the stereo off. And what this is going to do is actually stop this input from coming out by itself so that it's only going to run through the Stutter Edit program. Now there's a number of de default banks built into this that are actually really, really good. And one of them is actually this, these glitch plugins. So for this one, I'm just going to choose Side Delay. Now as you can see, as I click the actual buttons on the MIDI controller, it's going to switch through these presets built into the bank. And if you want to see what these presets are, you can actually just go up to this little drop-down menu right here with the preset manager. And this is going to give you a layout of everything based off of the actual octaves associated with whatever your MIDI controller is. And as such, you can go through and literally draw these in on the MIDI input of whatever your DAW is, or you can play them live and switch through them that way. So I'm just going to close that, and I'm just going to play these sounds uh, just with the bass soloed out and give you an idea of some of the actual really, really nice technical effects that you can get out of this. So first without. And then with. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to minimize this and show you what this sounds like blended into the whole mix. So that what actually happens with Stutter Edit is it's an interesting program in that each individual preset built in is based off of these, these actual repeating sections that are based off of fractions of a beat. And this is going to keep things in time, it's going to keep things in sync, it's going to keep things really neat and tidy when you're actually adding these glitch effects, which can sometimes go out of control, they can make your mix sound chaotic, and they can really, really destroy the actual feel of the track and how the flow actually goes. Uh, but Stutter Edit, because it's like this, keeps things in time, and it keeps things kind of neat, and it can actually re release on the grid, and actually the grid will be set to a different beat output there as well, so everything will be nice and clean and tidy. interesting other panks that I'd like to show you as well this time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to our chips and modems, and I'm going to show you the modem, modem butterfly. And a good thing to notice whenever you go into any bank is always take a look at the preset manager to make sure that uh, your scale of actually how much your, your, your keys are actually showing is going to always show 
the maximum amount of stutter so that every key that's there is actually going to be in time. A lot of the times it'll be set to C3 default, and as such, if your octave's up, um, you can see the lowest note that I'm gonna go here is this C3 on, or the 60th note here. Uh, so if I'm gonna wanna go lower than that, I have to keep the octave down. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have empty space, uh, whereas if it's up here, you can see I'm selecting empty banks right now, so always keep an eye on that. Uh, otherwise, you're just gonna be wasting space, and you could always be using that to add more cool stutter effects. So I'm gonna minimize this down, and I'm gonna give you an idea of what that sounds like. As you can hear, a lot of these are actually really, really quite intense. Some of them are less intense. And it's really just a matter of finding what's working for the sound that you're trying to go for and what's kind of working with the mix that you're actually working with. A lot of the times, the tracks that I make are glitch hop, and as such, they're going to be really heavy on these glitch sounds. Uh, but you can also use this very subtly in the background to just add nice textures, do things that wouldn't necessarily go along with a regular style synth, and kind of add some flavor that's not normally found in a lot of these types of modern synthesizers, like Native Instruments Massive, or Reactor, and other things like that. So you can add some really Really, really nice texturing effects. So the last thing I'm going to do is to show you one more, and that is the resonator uh, made by Teravita. And as you can see, this isn't just glitching plugins. There's actually built-in instruments here as well that you can use. Uh, there's generators for generating different types of noise. Uh, there's filters and modulators, crushers, jumps, cuts, chips, modems, um, space and delay, stereo tricks, and pretty much everything you can really think of. There's even ones for scratches. So I'm just going to select the Metal Basin by Teravita and drop that down. And remember, always check your presets. Make sure that you can get the maximum amount, actually, that's present there. All right, so I'm going to play that and show you what that sounds like. As you can see, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with this, but my, uh, my basic best advice that I can give you from uh, using Stutter Edit quite a lot is it's really, really, really easy to go really hard on the stutter, uh, but a lot of the times you're gonna, you're gonna think it sounds really good at the start, and you're gonna come back to it later and be like, oh, what did I do to that? So always save backups and start small, do just a small little stutter here and there. Um, I like going through and kind of finding things that I don't really like in the mix and stuttering those out and making those kind of sound better, and then going back and adding more if I think it needs more. This has been Fatal Data with Recording Essentials, and this is how you can use the Isotope program Stutteret to add some really cool textures to your bass effects. Thank you.